got the start We're only at the end of the ocean And there's eternity to go
Spirit yearning to your returning, my But your heart was tired Feel the worst 
and felt the fire Lay it all down Lay it all down Filled with all those anxious thoughts And your doubts became your God Lay it all down Lay it all down at the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus. Lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. Lay it all down, lay it all down. When you're right here Lord, I don't want to rush on ahead In my own strength When you're right here I'm not in a hurry When it comes to your spirit When it comes to your presence When it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, greetings, welcome those who are following overseas, online, greetings, welcome. I'm going to invite you to stand now as we get ready to pray and begin our service. Wherever you are, stand with us. My name's Simon Dynam. I'm the vicar of St. Paul's. Mark Nelson with me, who will be leading our service, steering us through. The Irish poet Patrick Kavanagh has a great line. The resurrection is laughter released forever. And we at St. Paul's found Caleb as one who was resonating with the super abundant life of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Caleb sounded a note that set so many resonating with life. And we're gathered to resound that note in our memories, in our prayers, so that it continues to be generative and hopeful 
and sets us resonating again. So as we stand, would you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus now, let your Holy Spirit be present to us. Thank you that we do not grieve like the pagans. We grieve with hope that even now, through Jesus, by your spirit, we can celebrate life. Fill us, Lord. Open our mouths. We praise you.
is running out, is running after me, and my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything, your goodness is running out, is running after me, your goodness, your goodness is running after me, is running after me.
All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I have been goodness of God all my life all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good every breath goodness of God. All my life, and all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yeah, and I will sing of the goodness of God. We look to God. All my hope is in you, Jesus. 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 We 
Nothing can stand against it. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. And Lord, we declare your name in this place, in our hearts, in our lives. The name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you grab yourself a seat? And a very good afternoon uh, to all of you. Welcome to this service. And firstly, uh, let me just say a huge thank you to all of you for coming. I, I know how much it means to Caleb's family that you're here. I particularly want to extend a welcome to all those of you watching on the live stream uh, right now. And we're just so grateful people have tuned in from all across the world. We know that people have traveled here from all across the UK, uh, from uh, South Africa, Ethiopia, Germany, Holland, Belgium, just to name a few. And if I'm honest, it's the impact of Caleb's life gets known in a moment like this, doesn't it? The beauty of his life. And this is a, such a special moment, isn't it? Where we get to celebrate, to give thanks, to grieve, and to remember each in our own way, Caleb as a son to Andy and Ruth, a brother to Lydia and Abby, Robbie and Harry, as a dearly loved friend and family member, godfather to my son, Seth, and even a prince for those of you that remember the days of Caleb. And so throughout this service, you are going to be reminded of how beautiful a life Caleb led as we hear from childhood friends, uni mates, mentors, family and friends from across the world. My wife Jenna and I had the privilege of knowing Caleb since his first year at university in Loughborough and since that day he might be known to you as an entrepreneur, a leader, a pastor, potential celebrity, no? <laughs> An annoyingly good footballer, I found, and a dearest friend. He also needs to be known and remembered for some of his cameos as a university lecturer, an Arab sheikh, the guy that did a TED talk, and one of the wolves from Twilight, if any of you guys remember that. You see, I'm just going to take a few moments to journey us briefly through what I can only describe as a life lived to its fullest. And then I'm just going to try and frame for us in the Bible some of the hope that Caleb carried from this life into heaven as we remember today. That even in our pain, we're not without hope. So Caleb will always be remembered as a fierce protector of the women in his life. And let me say this was a self-appointed role uh, which he always took very seriously. Uh, but as furious as he claimed to be, uh, a few weeks ago I was having dinner uh, with the family and Lyd said even when they fought as kids or scrapped as kids, even the slightest moment of emotion or tears, Caleb would just fall apart into the biggest softy you could imagine. And his tenderness towards those that he loved is really how I remember him. He instilled real value into Lydia and Abs. And it was a trait that he brought into every friendship that he had, his passion for family, whether it was as an uncle of Toby, or whether a friend here in the UK, or Ethiopia, or Eritrea, or maybe through one of the things that he did with his work, or maybe at uni, 
maybe you had the chance to go to church with him, you felt like you belonged with him, didn't you? He loved his sisters. He loved his mum, Ruth. And he loved all of us. Caleb went to university in Loughborough, and if I'm honest, uh, it seemed like he was there forever. He was the guy that um, left once and then returned a year later after a year in industry. Does anyone remember the year in industry? That was him. But it was at university that he began to encourage those around him to lead lives committed to Jesus with last man standing and of pure gold, though he didn't lead that himself. But There was even this one time where he accidentally got himself uh, suspended from the student union for... <laughs> a year uh, for getting overprotective about something. <laughs> I won't say what. But I love uh, about Caleb that this event happened uh, just before, I think it could have even been the night before, a shift event that he was running. And I remember him calling me up saying that he didn't feel qualified to lead. And that's another thing I love so much about him. He was authentic. He was real. As Abby told me, he was real, vulnerable about his weakness, always his own worst critic. And yet, as the conversation carried on, Harry said about Kay, that Caleb just seemed to know his need for Jesus. He had this heart to stay close to God, and I, I believe it served him well. So having the belief that failure wasn't going to define him as a leader, he had to be willing to fail. And this is a lesson he still teaches me today. But here started for him his 40 days of rejection therapy. I even remember having lunch with him on the wall outside this church as he asked me about impossible tasks that he could take on. And then went on to talk about um, even a potential sponsorship with the skincare company Dove. <laughs> Who's so I mean, who is this guy? But here we saw the start of him carrying raw chickens around town, trying to get into Wimbledon without a ticket, test driving a Lamborghini, and almost finding love on Carnaby Street. The memories are just so sweet. Then came the start of Shift. Launching his first professional workspace in his mum's house. <laughs> there was even talk at one point of converting the garage, I believe. But there was this desire in Caleb to see something move and shift in his own belief. To see something move in the church and to see something change in culture. And I'll never forget the conversation we had where he began to articulate the inner whisper he had from God. Knowing he had to follow that call to culture and move to Ethiopia. You see, Caleb saw the potential of his home nation and he shared it with the world. He had this passion to see creativity and community flourish. He founded Bacon Brew, Mella, Shift and Ethiopia in me. In the years that followed, he made the world feel local, carrying live animals on his back, taking adventures on at every turn. He made time apart feel insignificant through the energy that he brought to the times we had together, right? He had this remarkable ability to draw so many individuals together and somehow leave each one of us feeling right at the center of his life. And I believe that's a heavenly character trait that he leaves behind. Caleb had such an energy for life. He'd land, get coffeeed up and get going. And through it all, Caleb laughed, didn't he? He like laughed and laughed and laughed. It was so contagious, wide mouth and expression. It, it almost seemed naughty. <laughs> Kay laughed at the best of times and so often at the most inappropriate moments too. His laugh was like medicine to the people that he met. And the problem with even trying to describe such a life well lived is that there isn't even time to begin to communicate. They say you learn a lot about a leader by what their followers do when they're gone. And I don't know about you, but this feels like testament to that. I felt compelled. By the fact that that baton has been handed to each of us from a dear friend. 
I'm doing better than I thought. I want to finish this moment by pointing us to another Caleb, one we find in the writings of the Bible. And if you're unfamiliar with the Bible and with the Caleb of the Bible, then let me tell you that this Caleb was a faithful follower, one that God had set apart for himself, one who was sent out ahead of his people, who themselves were facing real uncertainty to go ahead and see if the future might have good things in store for them. And if you know the account, while others come and report back in fear, it was Caleb who in Numbers chapter 13 and 14 said this. So then Caleb silenced the people and said, we should go, for we can certainly do it. He was talking about inheriting a land and a life that God had promised to them. A few verses later, Caleb declares to his friends, the land we explored is exceedingly good. You see, God calls out a description of Caleb like this in Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Caleb in the Bible is who Dr. Robert Schuler describes as a possibility thinker, one who sees himself walking into the future, not alone, but leaning on the strong arm of his God. Friends, our Caleb was a possibility thinker. He was the one who made it to the promised land. Long before each of us leaning on the strong arm of God and willing us on, I believe, to lead, lead lives full of zeal and hope and passion for family and assurance that God is with us. The more possibility that there is to make a difference, to see things change, to overcome failure and to dream again. Caleb's spirit is on this house today. Caleb followed God wholeheartedly and I know he is willing us on to do the same. Deuteronomy, it says, the Lord has promised it. For the future ahead, I believe, is one that for each of us can be filled with hope. And Caleb, in his life, showed us how to pursue it. So in the coming moments, we're going to take some time to hear some stories of Kay's impact. But let me just pray, all right, before I invite the first ones to come and share. So today, Lord, give us eyes of hope that look to you and the certainty of where we cannot yet see. Help us to live lives of purpose and of joy firmly rooted in you. Pour out your love, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'd love to invite up now um, Dave, Milka, Salamawi, Harry, Tim and Mia, who are going to come and uh, share their memories with us now. So why don't we give them a round of applause as they come. Hi everyone, I'm Dave. Thanks for sharing, Mark. Fresh out of university, Caleb was introduced by a national radio host as, and I quote, impossibly good looking, <laughs> fit as a butcher's dog, and seems to be multi-talented to boot. I'm sure many of the women and the men in the room would agree with that description. But as you know, there was far more to Caleb than his looks, charms, and his talent. As a friend since the age of nine, it's a privilege to have seen Caleb grow into an inspirational leader whose humility, kindness, and generosity set him apart as a special individual. Caleb reflected the love of Christ in his character in such a way that a moment in his presence was like a moment with the Lord. I could stand here and tell you countless stories of laughter, of mischief and encouragement. I could speak of his smile, his gentleness and his ability to light up any room. I could speak of the impact and influence over my life. 
but I think Caleb would want me to say a bit more. He'd want me to speak of his parents and his sisters, who all shaped him into the brilliant man we all knew and loved. I never met Caleb's father, Andy, but from the stories I heard, he was an incredible man of God whose wisdom, generosity, and love of others pointed people to Jesus. Leading people to faith on a hijacked plane in the last moments of his life is something quite extraordinary. And it spoke of a fearless faith and a certain hope of eternity. Ruth, you too are an extraordinary woman. To journey the loss of Andy and to raise three incredible children is remarkable. But to do it with an unswerving faith clinging to the goodness of God throughout your life is a phenomenal testimony of the love of God with his kindness and peace. You and Andy are the people who helped to shape Caleb's character most as he grew into a man who knew both the beauty and the brokenness of life. He loved you both beyond measure and proudly spoke about you to everyone he met. Lydia and Abby... You're the most wonderful women who Caleb adored as his little sisters. You helped to guide, direct, and love him throughout his journey of life. When times were tough, when he needed comfort, inspiration, or even a kick up the backside, you were always there to support him. He loved you dearly, continually championed you, and he always protected you. Robbie and Harry... You are faithful men of love, kindness, and integrity who have been colossal rocks of support to the family. You're Caleb's dearly loved brothers, and he would be proud of everything you've done. Everything we celebrate of Caleb today is a celebration of your family's faithfulness to God amid tragic loss, pain, and suffering. You're an inspiration to us all. We thank God for your family and the gift of Caleb's life. We pray that his testimony continues to bless others like Andy, pointing people to the hope of eternity that is found in Jesus Christ. Hi everyone, my name is Milka and Caleb was a brother to me and one of my dearest friends. Trying to put into words how much Kayla meant to me feels quite overwhelming. Even after two years, the pain of his passing deeply sings. I had one of my favorite days with Caleb, Abs, and my husband Ben in Los Angeles together in December of 2019. Little did I know that would be the last time I would see Caleb this side of eternity. Life really is a vapor, yet as fleeting as it is, even one imperfect life can have a profound impact on those around it. And Caleb's mark on my life is indelible. I've had the joy of knowing Caleb for over 30 years. Our dads were close friends in Ethiopia before they both married and had children. We were born a few months apart and ad attended the same church and kids camp growing up. I have very fond memories of our childhood in Ethiopia and even more so of our late adolescent years, our families spending the summer together in the States and Christmas in London. I've known him as the teenager who was trying to understand how his faith changes the way he lives to an adult who was walking faithfully with the Lord, even amidst his grief. Caleb was magnetic. People easily gravitated towards him. His infectious laugh, kindness, his incredible gifts of persuasion, and it really was a gift, and putting those around him out of their comfort zone, his passion for transforming culture, and most importantly, his intentional love for God and his beautiful mom and sisters are some of the reasons that made him an exceptional human being. He gave people the confidence to be who they are, bringing out the God-given potential in those around him. 
He embraced the calling on his life, following the Lord wherever he led him. He had faith in the Lord that created stronger faith in others. He truly was the aroma of Christ, pointing others to the source of his ability to love and serve. Time with Caleb was rich, full of joy, life-giving, and constantly reminded me of home in Ethiopia. Throughout the years, I've had some wonderful memories with him, too many to name, but one of my favorite times with Caleb was when Ben and I spent a week out with him in Addis back in 2018, seeing firsthand how clearly and beautifully the Lord was using him there was so incredibly special to witness. I was encouraged by how faithful he was in the small, seemingly ordinary things that gave him a glimpse of God's greater plan. He trusted the Lord with the small steps and with the big dreams that seemed impossible to some. He was a beacon of hope, godliness forming in the way he interacted with others. I walked away from that week with him the same way I always do, with a greater sense of passion and courage for living out my calling. Caleb would be the first one to admit that he was far from perfect. He had a humble recognition that he didn't have it all together, nor did he come across like he did. The most potent times with Caleb were the times he was vocal about his brokenness, his struggles. I've always been so proud of him, but even more so the past few years as he was working through his grief. He was courageous enough to be vulnerable and invite others into his pain and to his own wrestle with the Lord. I've continuously been challenged by his small acts of faithfulness and allowing his grief to push him towards God and not away. He's taught me that I can have inner peace while living in the middle of mystery, that even as we long for the painful things to be redeemed, we can wait for God to show up today in the here and now to carry us through. Seeing him bravely enter into this intersection of pain and promise, acknowledging the brokenness and yet in the midst of it still clinging to faith in God has been more inspiring, more inspiring to me today than ever before. I miss Caleb terribly, my brother and friend. There is an ache in our celebration today and wounds that will never fully heal. Remembrance leads to sadness, but also immense gratitude for the times we've shared together. As excruciating as it's been processing his absence the past two years, they've also been the beginning of my remaking into a Christ follower, more sympathetic, compassionate, and conscious of my fragility and of my daily dependence on the Lord. Caleb's prayer after the horrific plane crash in 2019 was deeply comforting the day I found out he passed away and it still is today that our greatest sorrows are not wasted. We can live fully alive to pain and joy, sorrow and hope while we walk the path between earthly brokenness and heavenly restoration. I'm forever grateful for how Caleb spurred me to seek in the short life what is eternal praising even in my sadness, knowing that the sorrows I steward in this life will in time be redeemed. One day all things will be restored. Through his achievements and failures, strengths and weaknesses, joy and sorrow, in the end what matters is that Caleb ran his race well, setting his heart and mind on things above. And this is an example I want to follow. What a privilege to have had a friend like Caleb, whose impact on my life I'll never forget. So I continue to grieve with hope, knowing Caleb is now alive with Christ. What a comfort it is to know Caleb has been fully ushered from this life to an eternal one, that what he once knew in part, he now, he now knows fully. I'll close with this verse from 1 Corinthians 15 that I've been holding on to. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? 
The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Salamawi. I met Caleb at university. I remember we bonded over the fact that we were both East African, Caleb Ethiopian, I'm Eritrean. He was my Havisha brother. Caleb meant so much to me. If I was ever low in faith or I needed prayer, Caleb was the person I would turn to. If I wanted to discuss business plans or my project plans, Caleb was the one I would turn to. Caleb was easily my most inspirational friend. I used to go to loads of events with Caleb, whether it was his business talks, whether he was preaching at a church, or when he was doing the circuit for my 40 days. And I used to be in awe of Caleb, and not because he was this guy on stage, but because of his character and his humility. Kay was a great communicator. If he was talking to a small group or a conference full of a thousand, you would walk away feeling like he had spoken directly to you. I can never say no to Caleb. <laughs> he is the only friend that could call me up and persuade me to go on a church weekend away camping. <laughs> I don't do tents. <laughs> but when Kay calls, you go. I remember turning up and Kay showed me to my tent and he said, I got you, bro. This is for you. I said, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I said, which one's yours? And he said, I'm actually staying in the house. <laughs> I thought to myself, hold on. We need to, we need to discuss this, bro. All right. But like I said, I can never say no to Caleb. I was blessed enough that Caleb came to visit me when I was living in Eritrea. And I also got to see him in Ethiopia too. And that was super special. Everything Caleb had spoken about before he went out there had come to fruition and more. He had his coffee shop, his church youth group was thriving. His hand was in everything out there. I was there when he had his Mela two year anniversary. And um, that was an event where he brings these young entrepreneurs together. And um, I remember they were discussing business ideas and things to make the country better. And I was just there just watching him, so proud of him, because that was who Caleb was. He was a leader. He would connect people together and he would inspire them. And I would walk around town with Caleb and um, people would come up to him and be like, oh my God, you're Caleb Meekins. And um, they'd say, you do this and you do that. And can we take a picture with you? And um, I thought to myself, Caleb's that guy. He's, he's that guy over here. And these people would come up to me and say, here's the camera, you take the photo. <laughs> I was like, this, this, this isn't what's supposed to happen, Kay. Um, but you know what? I'd be his photographer any day, because Kay was special. These last two years have been super tough. Nothing can prepare you for, for losing one of your best friends. And um, being here today with you all as well, it makes it feel fresh again. But as sad and as painful as the grief is, I'm still super thankful that I got to know Caleb, that I got to call him friend, that I get to call him brother. So to Caleb, thank you for showing us what it looks like to live a life of purpose. 
thank you for showing us what it looks like to be an ambassador of Christ. Thank you for showing us what a leader looks like. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for encouraging us. Miss you, bro. Love you, bro. Caleb, I still can't believe we're doing this at all. And Caleb, my, my brother, there is so much to say and there is so much that we miss. And there's also so much that we want to celebrate. You have left this huge, huge hole in all of our hearts here. But you've also left this incredible legacy in us all. We miss you so much, Caleb. I miss you. I couldn't wait to be your brother-in-law. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't wait. And I'm sure all of us here can relate to all of these beautiful characteristics of okay. Kay. I miss you. I miss your kindness. The care you took over individuals, your friendship, your brotherhood, your cheekiness, your jokes, your pranks, your boldness, the way you went for things, your dreams, your vision, your belief that things could always be better. I loved how much time you had, that, that time didn't really concern you. you know, I just miss how much and inspired by how much you could fit into a single day. Your hugs, your laughter. I don't miss your support of Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Just had to throw that out. But I miss your joy and your voice, your openness, your presence and how intentional you were your energy, your wholeheartedness, your calmness, your genuineness, your optimism, your creativity, your view of the world, how you made the world feel local, like Mark said, the way you just dotted around the whole, the whole world, connecting us all, your appetite for life, Caleb, I want to thank you. Thank you for welcoming me into your beautiful family and for, for le letting me marry your sister, letting me go out with your sister, and, you know, <laughs> in the first place. Uh, but, okay, thank you for shining so bright, for teaching us all so much teaching us to step out of our comfort zones, to standing up for what's right and going for it, for showing us what courage looks like, for always seeing opportunity, for your beautiful imagination. Thank you for showing me and all of us what family looks like, for being an incredible, incredible brother. Thank you for inspiring me to draw nearer to God, for teaching us all that God meets us in the pain, even when we don't understand. Thank you for living life to the absolute full. Caleb, we miss you and we love you. And you live on through all of us here.
Hi, everyone. My name is Mia. Um, I met Caleb in 2011 at Focus, the annual HGB Church Week and Away, um, when he was a student in the group that I was helping to lead. He introduced me to his deeply beloved Shift family, and I've remained closely connected to this inspiring community ever since. So my memories of time with Caleb come primarily from time spent around the vision and heartbeat of Shift to see our generation captivated by God and impacting culture. I, um, the past and present trustees of Shift, have had the joy and deep honor of creating memories with Caleb, Lydia, and Precious around Shift. Caleb's vision for how the gospel should impact culture captivated hearts. He really, really, really believed the transforming power of the good news of Jesus. And I felt that in all he achieved, his heart's primary focus was to seek first the kingdom of God. When I think of Caleb, I think firstly of his gentle tone, his lovely big hugs, his sincere heart, and how he always seemed so delighted to see me. I don't think that was unique to me though. Kay seemed to pour out affection for others with such ease. During the annual shift weekend away, I often saw him interacting with others where he had an authentic ability to remain fully engaged, sincerely present to the person in front of him. He also held a beautiful curiosity for the one, which may be why after having any conversation, long or short with Caleb, whoever was standing in front of him felt edified and encouraged. I certainly did. Caleb could look into hearts, place courage in there, and draw out God-given value. This is true of all the Meekins. Many of Caleb's traits are not unique to him only, but are beautifully threaded through his family. Abby, even before conversations begins, the welcome you pour out love to people. You're often whole body expression of delight in the other person has the power to so deeply affirm the God-given value in each person. The way in which you honor others is stunning and reminds me so much of Caleb. Lydia. <laughs> the way in which Kay edified and encouraged others, you have this gift in abundance. You have nurtured an ability to ask the most insightful questions, a skill which I know builds others up, emboldens them, draws out of people who they really are bringing into focus the image of their creator. Often in my times of conversation with Caleb, we inevitably moved on to quite quickly talking about Jesus, about the depth of the gospel, and crucially about holding on to a heavenly, eternal perspective while living our lives fully each day. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I have vivid memories of these conversations with Caleb. He knew where he was going, that heaven was his true and eternal home. Of this, I have no doubt. I did want to briefly share one of my most precious memories of Caleb. Um, it was a fleeting chance meeting at Heathrow Airport in June 2014, a few weeks ahead of the shift weekend. And in a way that only the Lord can ordain, we accidentally met in the busy train terminal of the airport, heading in opposite directions. I remember it so clearly, his exuberant embrace, like Abby's, uh, the excited eagerness we had as we spoke about the upcoming shift weekend. And as our conversation drew to a close, it simply felt like the most natural thing in the world to pray together. So in the middle of the train station, we prayed. And to me, there was something about that moment with Caleb that was so fully alive with purpose and meaning. Both of us were doing exactly what we were supposed to be doing and were exactly where we were supposed to be. This chance meeting really marked me quite deeply. And it was a striking moment with Caleb whereby I simply couldn't help but live out faith with him. Ruth. 
this testimony of Caleb living a life of deep faith. He did because that's what he's seen modeled for his whole life. Your faith in action, your belief that God is who he says he is, witnessing you standing on the hope that you have and the sure promise of eternal salvation in Jesus. You've done this for all of Caleb's life. He lived a life of faith because by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you taught him how. I will forever live life grateful to the Lord for having met Caleb, for knowing him and for loving him as my little brother. Caleb's influence of and love for the coming kingdom will be, I believe, prophetically threaded into the next generation and beyond. When Caleb died, it felt like a mountain went missing from the landscape. The size of his life, the sheer enormity of what he meant to each of us, the hope, the faith, the courage he gave us, suddenly absent. Where a mountain once stood, there was just space. To me, he primarily was a friend and a brother, not by blood, but by love. We occupied some of the, quite frankly, weird rooms that Christian leaders gather together in. And although Caleb led in many ways, he led in the church. And he was just so very different. And he stood out in those rooms in one way that I just want to draw attention to. He was an example of how humility and confidence are not opposites. I knew him in his confidence. I knew him with his top off on the beach, doing far too much damage on the right wing with a football than he should have done. We knew him, didn't we, in 40 days and all the projects and events, all the many things that he did. The Caleb, like the Caleb of the Bible, our Caleb said, surely we can do this. We knew him in his confidence. But we also knew him in his humility. Late night, Caleb and I would thrash things out. He wasn't slow to draw attention to his own weaknesses, to pause on where he was frail, and then to show it to the world. And in that vulnerability, it made him utterly followable. You can follow a man like Caleb. The reality is humility and confidence aren't incompatible, and Caleb shone with both and was just so very distinct as a leader in that way. He was a man who would stand tall, but with tears in his eyes. Who would march, but from his knees. Who would run with a limp, not walk with a swagger. His humble confidence created space for others to join in. And in that, we became more than we would have been without Caleb. I loved him in his humility and his confidence. And it was this combination, one of the many reasons why his life felt like a mountain that we now miss. I'm just so thankful for Caleb. But the missing mountain is hard to take. And I find hope in one thing, that Caleb didn't live for himself. Caleb lived like an explorer to find the outer limits of the universe. He became big in his pursuit of something bigger. And this pursuit meant that his ambition was protected from arrogance. He was a mountain because he wanted to search out the sky. And he found in that pursuit, not an abstract religious system or a static scientific answer, but a person, Jesus. Caleb became big because of his pursuit of something bigger. The landscape feels so different in 2022 and and there is a gap that Caleb has left that no one can fill. But I do know that if my friend Caleb was here in his inimitably persuasive way would convince each of us to consider what made Caleb's life just so big. 
to consider the one beyond him, the one that filled them with such humility and confidence to consider Jesus. We're now just going to watch a video tribute which has been made by the guys at Mela. Gimfu. Gimfu? Gung gung fu. What's cold? What's it cold? Cold. Yeah. Gunfan. Gunfan. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to have you back. I hope you're enjoying time there with Agonati. How are you, Agonati? I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing time. You <laughs> miss you guys. Can't wait to see you. I do if I couldn't fail. I've always had this dream of wanting to create a space where creativity and community really flourish, and at the heart of it, coffee and great food. No, but um, thank you very much. Okay. That's the long I'm Ciao, 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 ciao. Is she? Come back. Ciao, Bedu. And the layer you know? Yeah, it's out. It's out. So we're now going to have a chance to hear from uh, Julian and Azam, from Ramsey and Jamie and from Joel and Niran. So can I invite you guys to make your way on up and let's encourage them again um, as they come. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to introduce myself first. My name is Azam, and I've had the absolute pleasure of knowing Caleb for nearly 13 years. We met in the first week of university. Caleb was in the year above, and Caleb, being Caleb, 
was the one who approached me, introduced himself and his friends to me, and immediately made me feel welcome. To him, that was probably a small act of kindness, whereas for me, that's something that I haven't forgotten after all these years, and we have been friends ever since. What an incredible human being. I feel as though that is the best and only way for me to start a tribute to the man. At times, I feel as though words don't really do justice, and you really had to meet and be in the presence of Caleb to enjoy what an enigma he really was. But at the same time, if we were to use words, he was kind, he was caring, he was devout, charming, handsome, so handsome, <laughs> was mischievous, endearing, and warm. These characteristics and words are associated to great people, and that is what Caleb was. It's truly an honor for Julian and I that Caleb's family has asked for us to say a few words today. I'll be honest, I was quite apprehensive to do so. Even before getting up here, I was really nervous. Yet, upon reflection, I'm speaking about a man who would encourage people to step out of their comfort zone. Someone who was so persuasive and so convincing that you end up following whatever he suggested because you had such utter belief in him. I mean, this is the guy that made me shout in the middle of Costa Coffee and make everyone stand up for Prince Khalib. <laughs> and only he can do that. <laughs> Kay was someone who you could approach about anything and get his advice on, absolutely anything. Whether it be career goals, life aspirations, family values, relationships, you name it. But that mischievous side to him was always there. His smile was infectious, his laugh was contagious, and it was so much fun to be in his company. You'd always expect a little slap to the ribs or a nudge in the back from him. And when you turn around, he'd be there beaming at you with that million dollar smile, just for him to remind you that life's not all that serious. To the Meekins family, I would like to say that Caleb's character is testament to how he was raised and the values installed to him in, from a young age. He was such a respectful, principled person, and those foundations were clearly built in your household. I will endeavor to use Caleb's character as an example when raising my own son. May God bless you all. With that in mind, I'd like to offer a short prayer. Oh my Lord, we ask that you shower your blessings upon Caleb and his family, Please may you continue to provide strength to Auntie Ruth, to Lydia and Abby, and to please comfort them in their grief and loss. Amen. And finally, I saw a quote from Caleb and it really stuck, struck a chord with me. It reads, at the end of our days, let's say at least I try to make a difference. Well, Caleb, you certainly did. You made a difference to so many people's lives in such a positive way that I don't even think how much, you, how much you know how much of an impact you had. I promise you, we cannot and will not forget you. We will smile when your name is mentioned and will look back fondly and always remember the good times we shared. Thank you all so much for letting me speak. I'll now pass over to Julian. Hi everyone. Whilst the reason we're here today is a sad one, I want to say how amazing it is to see how much love there is here for Caleb. Caleb and I met when we were about 13 years old in Beckenham whilst he was at Langley Park School. We grew up together and we were eight, when we were 18, we both got into Loughborough University. Over the years, we shared many friends and so many memories together. Many of those people are here today and many are watching from afar. I want to tell you a little story about when we were home from uni one Christmas. We were about 20 at the time and we were excited for New Year's Eve in London. We weren't far from here where we are today and we had a party lined up in the city. We were on a guest list but we got a call to say it was cancelled and it had all fallen through. It was late in the day so we called around to everyone, can you get us in? 
What's the motive? Where are we going? But everything was booked up and New Year's Eve was ruined. And then Caleb went, let's go to church. And I looked at him and said, are you kidding? No way. I was like, I don't go to church, Caleb. It's New Year's Eve, man. We're going out. Then Caleb, with his huge smile, laughed and he slapped me on the back. And he grabbed me. Nah, nah, it will be good. You'll love it. Come, come. We'll go. It'll just be for five minutes. It'll be good. It'll be good, I promise. No, 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 I said. I'm not going. No way. Anyone who knows Kay, and has been said many times today, knows how persuasive Kay could be. You'll understand why half an hour later, I was here in this very church. In fact, it was the last time that I was here. People ran up to Caleb with huge smiles on their faces, so excited to see him, and they embraced him, wishing him Happy New Year, one after another. You would have thought he was a celebrity. He would go, this is Julian, meet Julian. Caleb would always push his friends forward. He would always have your back, and he would always have your best interest at heart. I knew Caleb, my friend, but I looked at him that day like, who is this guy? And I thought, this guy really is special. It opened my eyes to the fact that this guy went beyond the world that I knew him in, but he was impacting people positively everywhere that he went. This is before my 40 days, before all his work in Ethiopia. This guy was always special, and he was always bringing positivity everywhere he went. When I was asked to speak today, I thought, no, I can't do it. It will be too emotional. I called my friend Hussein, and who's here today, and I told him, I've been asked to speak, and we spoke about it for a moment or two, and then Hus said, you know, this is a very Caleb thing to do. And we both laughed, thinking about all the things he roped us into doing that he knew we weren't comfortable doing, <laughs> but he knew that we could do. He would encourage us to do more, and he would push us on. For a moment, it was like Kay was up to his old tricks, like back in the day. I've hardly spoken about Caleb since he passed away because I often couldn't finish the words I was trying to say. I read about grief, and I wanted to learn when I'd feel better and when I'd get over it. It wasn't until a year and a half later I was in Australia, um, but when I returned to the UK, and I was able to talk to Ruth, and I could finally let it out, and it was her strength of character that lets me talk to you here today. Ruth, you've been through so much, but everyone here is with you. Your son was a truly amazing person, and his positivity runs through us all here today, through all the people here today. What I've learned is that grief is not something to get over. It will always stay with you. Of course, we will always miss Kay, but grief is something that you must use positively. Whenever you have a challenge and whenever you have a fear, please stop and think of Caleb. Think of what he would say, what advice he would give, the encouragement he would give you, and I promise you, the challenge or the fear you are facing will no longer feel so daunting. I use that every day. Abby, Lydia, and Ruth, you are a truly beautiful family. Your strength and your values are an inspiration. On behalf of Caleb's friends from Beckenham, from Langley, from Loughborough University, and everybody else here today, we miss you, Kay. We miss you every day, and we love you. Oh, there's a lot of people. <laughs> That's not really a surprise, I guess. Yeah. My name's Jamie, and this is Ramsey. Um, our friendship with Caleb started in 2012 when the three of us made a commitment to meeting weekly to pursue a deeper relationship with God together. One of our first meetings we had was on a beach at the HDB Church summer holiday called Focus. We had all felt compelled to have an emergency meeting to confess some of the things we had been struggling with in the run-up to focus. 
and Caleb being the pioneer he was, kicked us off with tremendous raw honesty and integrity. This sparked an escalation of some sorts in honesty amongst the three of us till it led to my turn. I decided to dig deep and reveal one of the more embarrassing stories of the year just gone. As I was getting to the crux of my embarrassment, we heard a rustling in the reeds next to us and an outburst of laughter from some younger kids who had been hiding in the reeds listening to me revealing my deepest secrets. <laughs> Without discussion, Caleb sprang up from where he was sat, creased over with laughter and ran away from the scene. He ran so fast he was out of sight in seconds, leaving Ramsey and I trailing in the sand trying to catch up with him which of course was never going to happen because Caleb was freakishly good at everything he did, including sport. Our gathering started as an experiment that we had hoped would lead to a deeper place of faith, but it became a lifelong brotherhood that we would affectionately refer to as Quad. From Quad's inception to the time Caleb and I moved on from London, we would meet most weeks to chat and pray. These times became essential in a city where busyness would often trump genuine friendship and connection. Even after we left London, we continued to meet on FaceTime when possible and started to go away together biannually on what we referred to as a quad retreat. These were some of my favourite memories of Caleb as it usually involved beer, FIFA, walks, dancing and games. All three of us had quite busy and demanding lives, none more so than Kay. So when we retreated like this, it felt like a chance for all three of us to breathe out and completely relax. Caleb and I were united in our adoration and awe of Ramsey's glorious ability to make us all laugh till we cried on a regular basis. I think Caleb was truly one of your biggest fans. Caleb was magnetic at all times, but he was at the peak of his powers on nights out. I remember one quad retreat in particular where we went for some beers in the village of Nutsford and ended up trying to gain entry to what I assume was Nutsford's only nightclub. The bouncer was adamant that we couldn't enter because Caleb was wearing white trainers, yet somehow Kay managed to convince him to let us in if he took the trainers off and entered wearing the black socks he had on underneath. <laughs> Astounded but not entirely surprised, Ramsey and I followed him into the club and reveled in his magnetic presence as he proceeded to befriend every person in the room wearing his very smart pair of black socks. <laughs> Caleb achieved a lot in his lifetime, but this remains to be his finest achievement in my eyes. In 2014, Quad's bond was tightened further as both Ramsey and I lost our fathers within the space of six months. Sadly, this was not something that Caleb was alien to, and together as a three, we journeyed through the pain of grieving our dads. Caleb's ability to navigate the hardest possible conversations while remaining engaged, loving, wise, raw, and honest was extraordinary. In facilitating conversations for both of us to grieve and journey through our loss, Caleb opened himself up to the pain of losing his own father again at such a young age. For many of us, this is the first time that we've been able to gather together since Caleb died. To celebrate his life, yes, and all that he's been for us, and to grieve his death. And one thing that I learned from Caleb, particularly in the later years, as we learned to grieve his father too, after decades, is that over the last couple of years for us, which has been very difficult, unsettling, confusing, painful, joyful, all of the things, that there is a place to grieve that isn't just the immediate, and that we need each other to grieve. One thing that I learned from Caleb is that we're not as independent as we sometimes like to believe. That in this room, we can lean on each other as we chat at the back, as we call each other after, to open up, to ask for help. I know I've needed to. Something I've wondered at as I've listened and as I've reflected about Caleb's life is the number of people he seems to have been able to impact. He lived a deep, wide, last, long-lasting life. 
And I've wondered at how it was that he, he managed to, to gather a crowd two years after he's passed away. I was at an Ethiopian restaurant yesterday and as, at the mention of Caleb's name, the place lit up. Somehow, everybody seems to know of Caleb. There was one lady who talked about how he, she has her, hit him on his, her TV the whole time with his goat on his back and running around. There was a, one, one quad retreat where we were in Kent walking down the beach. We passed a bar and there was a friend of Jamie's, someone who knew. We stopped, had a 10 minute conversation. A few days ago, that, that man messages and says, I, I've never forgotten that conversation. There was something in that 10 minute conversation that was so amazing. And I've wondered, what is that? And I think one of those things is that Caleb loved us. The reason we're all here and watching on YouTube is because we have been loved by him and we've known him in whatever way. And he would want us to know that, that he loves us. And it's Jesus Christ in him that he would want us to know who loves us still. And I think that's a bit of an invitation for us too. To be loved by God and to love each other. It's just what Jesus said to his friends, that they'll know you, that you're my disciples, because of how you love. And he, and he has loved us. And it's the invitation. So I guess I want to ask, because we all know him in different ways. Afterwards, don't just ask, how did you know Caleb? But in what ways did you know Caleb? Who was he? As my friend Ben asked shortly after he died, what did you learn from him? His life is one well lived. And we loved him too. There are so many things we loved about Caleb. He was so many things to so many people businessman, friend, leader, entrepreneur, pioneer, advisor, brother, son. But the Caleb that I missed the most was the one that I would uh, gladly sit in my pants with while watching football or playing FIFA. Caleb was a brother to so many of us and we will always remember him. I'm Niran. I had the privilege of knowing Caleb since 2014. We actually met, not through Christian circles, I work in the creative industry, and we followed each other on Instagram. And then randomly outside Hillsong Conference, there was this guy with a whole group of people around him. So I queued up, naturally, to meet the celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like, oh, you're Niran. We should get a coffee. We got that coffee. And then the rest was sort of history. He just had this energy about him. Then I saw what he was doing in my 40 days, and I was like, I need to tell my CEO about this at work. In advertising, you don't really meet any Christians. If you do, no one really talks about faith. I was like, I need to tell him about Caleb. He loved what he was doing, so he brought Caleb in to inspire 300 people. Naturally, he smashed it. Straight away, I had emails from three, four women asking, is that guy single? <laughs> And the mad thing for me was Caleb came in, spoke about his values, spoke about my 40 days, and spoke about God in a work setting, which is so rare for, to see. Caleb was the most creative person I knew, and it wasn't just that. He pushed us all to jump out of our comfort zone. Even being on the stage today, I was like, when Abby first asked me, I tried to ignore it. And I was like, what would Caleb do? <laughs> We've got two more stories. First one is from 2015. Caleb came back to London 
um, for a short trip. But you know those trips. He packs it out, seeing 30 people in two days. We were meeting for him for lunch in the East. He naturally came 35 minutes late. And then you see this big smile coming down the street. Uh, yes, we can finally eat. He stops. He squats down, sees a homeless man, and starts speaking to him for 20 minutes. And we were all shamelessly far too hungry to even notice the man, but Caleb saw him. He always made time for people, always present and kind. He radiated God's love, and not just through words, but through his actions. That moment always stood out for me and the friends that, that were there that day. And finally, a lot of my in-person time with Caleb was spent with playing FIFA with Joel, usually starting at 6 p.m. and we wouldn't finish till midnight. And we spoke about everything. But there's one particular story. They came to, they came to my house and Caleb had like a 8, 10 a.m. shift meeting the next day. We got playing FIFA. Joel left, but Caleb was insistent on beating me. He'd never, ever beat me. Two in the morning was when he finally beat me. Bigger smile on his face. And that was Caleb for me. He was cheeky and just persevered. And finally, it's a strange to quote Marvel here, but what is grief if not love persevering? Hey. Um. Just for the record, me and uh, Caleb were equally bad at FIFA, uh, often competing for last place and second to last place. And that game would often end in a frustrating, hard fought nil nil draw. <laughs> um, oh man, honestly, um, I, was, I didn't know how to feel this morning when I woke up, but just getting the chance to hear stories about Caleb. Um, getting to see so many of you here in a room that knew him and loved him. I'm just loving it so much. Um, please, you know, after just grab me and tell me as many stories about him as possible because um, it just brings me so much life. With Caleb, anything could happen. Hey, anything could happen. One of the many reasons I loved being with him, time always felt so precious and special. Any plans you had for the day before meeting Caleb might not be the plans for the day after meeting Caleb. I mean, maybe, honestly, maybe the second time we ever met, it was supposed to be a, a gentle catch-up over coffee on Portobello Road, a little uh, chit-chat. About 30 minutes in, two guys turned up with cameras as if it was MTV punked or something like that. I'm like... What's going on? And Kay was about to shoot a My 40 Days on, on the fear of singing. And he was like, oh, well, you're a singer as well. Maybe you can come with us and, and make this happen. And, and he managed to convince me to be a part of it. We ended up spending the whole day filming him singing Ben E. King, Stand By Me on Tubes Across London. Uh, yeah, thankfully for everybody, the footage never came out. Time with Caleb always felt like you were close to something so extraordinary, something remarkable. You just wanted to be near him, right? He knew everyone. I mean, I remember when we turned up in, in Tel Aviv, I mean, within four hours of landing, he'd made friends somehow um, who we ended up spending all night with in a bar dancing very badly to 90s classics. Uh, you see, just like FIFA, me and Caleb were also both pretty bad at dancing. You know, right? That's how we got our nickname, the Granddads. So much fun, but his, his charm and his spark took nothing away from his depth and his commitment as a friend. And he was the best friend. You know, despite being the busiest person I knew, he would always make time for you, check in with you, pray for you. You know, after my mom died, he sent me a voice note every single morning, long, long, long after every other condolence had dried up, everyone else had forgotten. And he was my lifeline. 
He was a lifeline for so many of us. So what was his secret? It's been said before, but you know, I was thinking, what would Caleb want me to say about him? He'd be probably pretty good at that. I said he was bad at FIFA, by the way, wouldn't he? But um, he would want me to tell you this, hey. He loved Jesus. And he really knew that Jesus loved him first. Unconditionally. Always. Forever. He was a five-year-old boy on the swings getting his daddy, Father God, to push him. Higher. Higher, daddy. Higher. And he would want me to say, there's a seat on the swings waiting for you. Caleb, so incredible your life, your character. I would have loved you from afar, but I got to love you closer. You saw in us the best versions of ourselves. Thank you, brother. Um, is it all right if I share a little song? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, my brother. I came here with nothing, left with even less. Still harming something, tail between my legs. I'm inconsistent and smaller than average, but I'll go the distance. Crawl on the canvas, dying or thirsty beside the stream. I fall off the bedside when I try to dream. And I get this feeling that this time it's over. Fans on the ceiling blowing me sober. I yearn for a home where I haven't been yet And I don't mean a front door, I don't mean a three bed My middle names are failing and falling Riding the waves but my sailing's appalling My best friend died this year, and it really ruined me. Covered in black tar, everything glued to me. The slither of something that keeps me from jumping is the last thing I wrote back was that I love him. Hope, sweet hope. Hanging on a hope, sweet hope. I could use some hope, sweet hope Hanging on to hope well, I had a dream that you were alive and We were arriving upon an island I think I've outgrown the plant part that grew me It turns out that freedom came with what overthrew me And I'm still awaiting all of the best things wrapped up inside me like my intestines and there is a window behind every curtain light pouring in slow the morning is certain hope sweet hope hanging on a hope sweet hope i could use some hope sweet hope I could use some hope, sweet hope And there is a song for all that is unsung Where all that is evil will surely be undone 
And there is a place where the gates always open. Gold on the pavement restores what was broken. And that's where we're going. That's where you'll find me next to my best friend with my wife beside me. And I don't have answers, but I have a feeling that all of your pain will one day reveal them. So why don't we why don't we stand? And uh, and we're just going to take a moment to be quiet and pause. And if you know Jesus, then just to receive His Spirit for you. If you don't, you can invite Him to come and meet with you right now as well. And we're just going to wait just for a moment before um, the team help us as we respond in worship. So let's just wait. So God, meet with us. Minister to us. Pour out your love afresh. Come, we pray.
far above oh God for thou oh Lord art high above all the earth and thou art exalted far So we're going um, to invite Abs and Lydia up right now to come and share with us. And why don't we cheer them on as they come. You guys can sit if you'd like. <laughs> oh, man. 
so we weren't really sure if we were going to even do this. We kind of took it out of the uh, flyers because we didn't know how this was going to be. But um, yeah, I think like we've lost the limb. We've we're just no longer the same without Kay. That kind of thing he could just put into you, which is similar to what Lindsay is doing now, just putting his hand around your neck and just kind of backing you, I think just carried me through um, life without a brother, without a father. But he just was amazing at leading in his loss and leading from his pain and being so real with where he was at. So it's probably appropriate to be up here in my own pain and loss. Um, Kate just understood there was just huge power and vulnerability and I think we both struggled to engage with our loss over the last two years it comes in like a roller coaster um, but probably leaning towards more distracting but I think there's something in knowing Kay was such a champion of knowing that there is hope, there's a hope we're holding on to. Do you want to talk? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I think it'd be naive to think that we'll ever be the same. But, and Caleb impacted every single part of our lives. He impacted um, just the vision for what what we want to do in the future. Um, impacted the way that how we feel like we belong and we are secure. Impacted us as a family. Sorry. Um, yeah, just was just impacted every part of us. Um, and I think he'll continue to do that in a way that we'll see in all parts of our lives. And looking around, just seeing how he's going to impact so many of you guys and hearing the stories, it's, it's incredible to see the different parts of Kay that lives through all of you. So please, guys, keep coming to us, keep coming around, <laughs> um, keep telling us stories. Um, yeah, and we, um, I suppose, really want to thank you all as a family for your support and just even looking out at how many faces are here two years on. Thank you so much for every text, every prayer, every, um, every ounce of kindness that you've shown our family. We can't tell you enough how much it means to us and how much it gives us strength because as Ab said, yeah, we, we will never be the same again. Um, and it almost can sometimes feel harder. Coming here has felt harder for us as a family than I think the other memorials we've, we've had the privilege of having. Um, but we really wanted to come here today and say to you guys, that, or share in the fact that um, even though we miss Kay every day, um, he continues to inspire us every day and we felt so strengthened by and encouraged by hearing the stories today I know it's been a long one but it's almost like we don't want it to end because he does continue to inspire and encourage us on a daily basis and when we think that's too hard or that's too painful that we were saying it's too painful to come up today but 
um, we weren't quite sure what we'd do, but actually, yeah, we've got Caleb in the back of our minds, spurring us on and hopefully spurring all of us on to, to step out and do the right thing and make this world a better place. We don't have that long here. And um, I think as a family, we felt united in actually, Kay says it best himself. Mel mentioned it earlier after everything that happened two years ago. We found ourselves all back on his, on his um, Instagram watching a prayer that he shared in our church in Ethiopia. And it was, it was just so crazy how applicable it was to what we were going through. So we just wanted to come up and introduce um, this video, hoping to encourage us um, as we re-enter really painful um, memories and uh, loss today. It feels quite colossal today coming together and having to engage with the, like the, the severity of the loss. Um, but I think what Kay has to say will hopefully encourage us all. So we're just going to play um, a video from Caleb. Thank you. Thank you. So if uh, anybody's been watching the news, just even over the last 24 hours, um, a cyclone um, has hit Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and Malawi and uh, killed over 150 people uh, so far. So a terrible, terrible tragedy. And if anyone's been watching the news over the last few days, uh, you would have seen the terrible incident in New Zealand uh, where 50 people have been counted dead now and 50 people injured as a man uh, stormed into a mosque and just shot. Uh, as many people as he could and killed as many people as he could. And then as Steve mentioned, we have our own global tragedy that took place here last week, um, where even the news was broken as we were sitting here in church. And so as we listen to these tragedies, these global tragedies, the question is, how do we respond? Uh, what do we do? And I think we have no one else to look to but Jesus in, in, in our response and what Jesus did and how he responded. Uh, when people were in pain, he knew he was about to heal Lazarus and raise him from the dead, but yet he met his friends in that place of sorrow and he wept and he cried. And the reality is it's painful, it hurts, it's confusing. We don't know what to do. But when we look to Jesus, we, we are comforted and we, we, we have an image of someone who is faithful. Um, and... It's not about giving trite answers or explanations as to why these things have happened, but instead it's to, to, to lean on God, to trust him, um, and to, to pray, and to pray that his will be done, and to pray even when we don't understand it, we stand and we're faithful. Many people would have known people that died in the, in the air crash last week, um, and it's incredibly painful, and we don't want to even rush past that. The Bible, 50% of the Bible is lament, it's grief, it's mourning. Yet, in our worship songs, it probably doesn't even make 15 or 10% of what we sing. And so we have to be okay with grieving. We have to be okay with mourning. We can't just rush past it. When people are crying, we can't say, be strong and stop crying. We have to stand with them and cry with them. We have to put our arms around them. And we found the news out last week in Young Adults, and, and that's what we did. We cried, we mourned, we grieved. Um, as you know, in the 96 crash, my dad was killed. Um, he was an elder at this church. And so obviously it, it brings back tremendous, tremendous pain and, and hurt. But in that grief, God meets us and he is faithful to heal us. And we stand as testimonies of that. We stand as testimonies that he is a healer despite the pain. Despite the grief, he is faithful. And being strong is, not, is not, not crying. Being strong is being vulnerable. Being strong is bringing our pain before God and saying, would you heal it? Would you use it? And we need to redefine that. It's okay to cry when our brothers and sisters are in pain. Jesus weeps. He weeps with those that weep. 
And so we don't rush on, we don't rush the mourning, we don't rush the grieving. But we stand faithful, knowing he is faithful. My mom is here today, 20 years on, a testimony of the faithfulness of God. And this week, she went and found someone who lost her husband with three kids, who's in a situation of hopelessness. One boy, eight years old, the same age that I was when my dad died. And we could stand with them, we could cry with them, and we could say, God is faithful. There's no explanation. There's nothing that makes it easy. There's nothing that's going to comfort you but him. And so today as we pray, we pray not with just brash words or, or, or simple explanations as to why these things have happened or why they're happening. But we pray with an assurance that God is faithful and we trust him and we stand with those that mourn in this tough time. So let's pray. Lord, you know what's going on even if we don't. God, you know what's going on even when we don't. It seems to make no sense. The pain that it's instigated is just unfathomable for so, so many, God. But you are faithful. You have always been faithful. And so, Lord, right now we just lift up our brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters who are grieving right now. Lord, you are a comforter. So would you comfort them right now? You are Prince of Peace. Would you bring peace upon them right now? Father, there are people in this place that know people that have died. Would you be their comforter? Would you give them the wisdom to know what to do in this situation, God? You are a good, good God. And Lord, we say no matter what our circumstances say, we will stand with you because you are a good, good God. So Father, go with every individual. Bring peace be with the families that are mourning today. And may they know that the church is standing with them. We are not absent. We are lifting them up in prayers. And even right now, Father, people are, are feeling your comfort because we are praying right now, Lord. We believe that now, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And so as we, begin, as we begin to draw our time together to a close, I'd, I'd love to invite Ruth up, Caleb's mum, who's just going to share a few words with us and the sisters. And I wonder whether Harry and Robbie, you come as well, and Presh, come on up. And let's encourage them. I'd like to say thank you for all of you who came from near and far. It means a lot for us to have you here and to celebrate the life of a charismatic, creative, and faithful young man. I called him my son. Standing and speaking in front of an audience is out of my comfort zone. But by the grace of God, here I stand in the front again. I thank especially Caleb's friend for being so faithful and supportive to our family. You have been good to us throughout this difficult time. Our family appreciates your practical help, prayers, emails, letters, calls and text very much. As I always say, God took one son and gave me so many sons and daughters. I thank God for that. My daughters and I are seeking God's strength for each day and by his grace we have reached case second year. It's hard to believe that we are gathering again 
to remember Caleb's second anniversary. For our family, it's like yesterday, although some of us are still struggling to accept that it really has happened. Despite the long ongoing pain, I believe we have hope to see Caleb again. In the years following my son's death, I discovered that no matter how great my loss or how deep my grief, the world does not stop. I have been praying to get out of my great anguish and grief, honestly, without God's help and the Lord's hope. I don't think I would have survived. I hope I will make him proud by continuing his legacy while I'm living on this earth. First Thessalonians 4, 13, 18 says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Paul does not say, do not grieve. He talks about grieving with hope, and it's okay to grieve, but he asks us not to grieve like those who have no hope. Through Jesus' days and resurrection, we have hope to see our loved ones. The point is, we can grieve with hope, but we are not helpless. As the Bible says, death is our enemy, so we won't accept it with open arms, and our grief is not selfish. The stronger the love, the deeper the grief will be. We grieve because we love. The one we love is no longer here with us to love. Our hearts ache with pain and with grief. We grieve. That's why I grieve every day from the day K went to heaven. Family and friends and people know, know me, witness that I cried every time I miss my son. I express my grief in different ways. I wear different t-shirts with his photos, which have become my uniform. <laughs> I made a memorial garden for him in our family garden that keeps me busy. You are welcome to come and visit. When I was in Ethiopia, I saw his work with amazement. When I walked around Addis wearing his photos on my t-shirt, I heard again and again random people calling his name. Oh, Caleb, we miss you. I said quietly, me too. Sometimes I stopped and exchanged words and end up with tears. I heard from different people about how, to help, how he helped them, what he meant to them, and how much they missed him. I was impressed and admired him. He has done a lot in his short time in this earth. He really made a difference in people's life and left a big mark behind. I miss him so much. I enjoy listening when people talk about him. I also love mentioning his name in every conversation. The t-shirt I wear with his photos attracts so many people to engage conversations. I like that. I wrote him letters and poems, especially for his birthdays, Christmas, and New Year. I will share with you one of the poems I wrote recently at the end of this. By saying all this, it doesn't mean I don't have faith and hope. I believe we can have a sincere faith in God even as we are wrestling with unanswered questions. God understands our pain. That's why I pour out my heart to him. I thank God for making the way and one day this will all end. One day there will be a joyful reunion. I'm looking forward to that day to see my son and my husband. God wants to share this hope with everyone, but it's a gift that needs to be received. It's by trusting our lives into Jesus' hand and committing to follow him that we share this hope. This is the grieving in hope that is Jesus' gift to all who put their faith in him. Here is the poem I promised to share with you.
my son, my son, my only son, my pride and joy to me, my son, my son, you are all I hope you would be. Kaliye, my only son, my pride and joy, I pray that God bless and keep you safe, my precious boy. My own, my beloved son, that was all I hoped to be. I need God's help for all the pain and heartache left that, that life brought to me. My dearest son, we are celebrating again your coming and your going out of this world in February. I wish you stayed more years with your loving friends and family. You and your sisters are the most precious gift I receive from God. Little did I know the span of your years here soon to be an end. I always enjoy celebrating your birthdays and waiting for the next one to come. I wish God showed me when the number of your days on this earth would end and your life in heaven would begin. I woke each morning to start a new day, but the pain of losing you never goes away. I think of things you used to do and say, son, there is so many things of you difficult to throw it away. Remembering you is easy. I do it every day. It's the hurt ache of losing you that never goes away. I think of you in tears and silence, asking my God, like the psalmist in his presence, have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am faint. Hold me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? I'm worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping. It doesn't seem my tears are drying. I drench my couch with tears. Do you have any answer for my prayers? My eyes grow big with sorrow. My heart is beat with an arrow. When are you, Lord, answering my request? My pain is bad. I can't listen a word waiting for you, Spirit. I cry to God for help every day. I know he will deliver me one day. Then I will declare his praise. He is the father of the fatherless, the defender for the widows. My son, my son, you are everything to me. My son, my beloved son, you all I hoped you would be. My son, Kalie, my pride and joy, I pray that God bless and keep you safe, my one and only boy. My son, my pride, my joy to me. My only beloved said that was all I hoped to be. I can't believe it has been two years since you went to heaven. Friends who love you are here to celebrate your short life on this earth, my son. We are remembering you and thank God for the time he gave us. Thank you, son, for being a brilliant son, brother, and friend to so many of us. I could hear about you wherever I go throughout the country. You have no idea, son, how many lives you touch for God's glory. No matter how long I thought of you with love today, but that's nothing the same tomorrow or yesterday. Wherever I go, in every conversation, I often mention your name. I love when people talk about you as you are there with them. All I have are memories and pictures in frames all over my house. God has you in heaven. I have you in my heart. There you remain. Though we talk about you, nothing seems quite the same. It's so sad you had to go and you're leaving 
cause such a pain. I wish I could see you one more time with your surprise walking through the door, but I know it's impossible. I will hear your voice no more. I know you can feel my tears and you don't want me to cry. I see your pictures, you seem so happy, smiling and say, Mama, don't cry. I am in God's hand. One day we will meet again. Where there is no days, there is no tears in heaven. Yet my heart is broken because I can't understand why special since someone so precious like you had to die. I have faced such pain in the past two years. I need God's help how to get through this. I pray that God will give me strength and somehow get me through as I struggle with the heartache that came when I lost you. I always hold you in my heart, my son, until we are together again in heaven. May God help me to continue your legacy before I come home and face to face we see. Lord, help me to say it's well with my soul despite all the challenge. Since there is nothing that happens in our life without your knowledge, We hold into your promise, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord, for lending us Caleb and making him unique. I'll finish with Caleb's word from his diary. Life isn't going to be easy. Look around, closer to home. Like life can be tough, but one thing remains. In Jesus, there is hope. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, Ruth. And uh, just before I close our service with uh, the blessing to let you know that in a few moments' time on the system, there'll be a, a song played. Um, and really, it's space, an invitation for you to just um, sit in the moment, just a few moments longer if you'd like to. Um, but then also in the atrium at the back of church, thank you so much to all of those that have prepared that. There's lots of tea, coffee, cake, and refreshments served. So Please, whenever you're ready, make your way out through there. And as, as Ramsey said, let's share the stories. As Joel shared, uh, said, let's share the life because it brings so much life to so many. So can I invite you to now stand for the blessing? So friends... Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. 
I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I would do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Sing hallelujah. Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in To my knees will I fall, will I sing and hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine.
Child of June, but how much brighter than before? Yeah, I'm young and I sing the snow. I sat down on the train between the cars and all the world rushing past. I felt I
Just let 